Do you ever feel like everybody else has it all together and you worry that you'll never measure up? Do you feel like if people really knew who you were or what you had done in the past that they probably wouldn't like you very much? Well, if so, today's podcast episode is absolutely for you. We are talking to Lisa Goins, author of the book, Courageously Uncomfortable, When the Real Woman You Want to Be is on the Other Side of Fear. We're having a great conversation about why it is so important that we have community around us that we can be open and vulnerable in, both for ourselves and for others. Um, This conversation absolutely challenged me as an introvert, and I know it will challenge and encourage you as well. So definitely, if this is something that you can relate to, stay tuned. All right, today we are talking to Lisa Goins, author of the book, Courageously Uncomfortable, When the Real Woman You Want to Be is on the Other Side of Fear. Thanks so much, Lisa, for talking with us today. Well, Brittany, it's just wonderful to be here. Well, I want to dive right in because I am so excited to learn more about your book and just this incredible message that you have for Christian women. So can you tell us, um, I know the title of your book is called Courageously Uncomfortable. Um, why that title? Why um, Why is that important? Yeah, so when you're the type of person that lives your life with a lot of fear, which is exactly who I was and sometimes still am to this day, but you know, when God awakened me and just kind of helped me realize that if I just kept quitting everything just because I was uncomfortable, then I was going to experience really the bare minimum of what he had for me in this life. And so every decision I made was because I was feeling uncomfortable or fear was related. And I just realized that I don't want to have the bare minimum of what God has for me. And I don't think that other women do as well. So it was something to realize that I needed to stop making every decision based on the fact that it made me uncomfortable. Yeah, that's something that I can totally relate to as I think of all the things that I want to do. But, you know, of course, I'm scared and I don't want to step out. And what if it feels? What if it doesn't work? What if I look stupid? Um, Yeah, I can totally relate to that. And I know that a lot of the Equipping Godly Women community can as well. Can you give us some examples, though, more specific examples of what that looked like in your life, like times that fear held you back? Yeah, so probably one of those greatest examples would be just when I married into the ministry. So I I didn't grow up in church, and so I didn't really have that church background, but I found my way into the church and um, and gave my life to the Lord. So I married a pastor. He was a youth pastor at the time, and I just wasn't groomed at all for ministry. So it was such a shock when I did get married, which was, um, I've been married for almost 27 years, so back in 1992. But when I married into the ministry, I very quickly realized that I was not at all equipped for what I thought I was supposed to have to be the pastor's wife. You know, I didn't sing. I didn't play the piano. I was afraid really to put two sentences together and talk to people. If you really, I just felt so unequipped to be where I was in my life. I mean, I felt like I couldn't even pray out loud. You know, I just thought, wow, so I can't even like show up at a baby shower. And what if somebody asks me to pray for the cake? And I'm like, I can't do that. I am terrible at this pastor's wife gig. And so I just really stepped back on the sidelines early on in ministry um, while my husband was a pastor. And I just kind of quietly took my seat because I just thought I'm not equipped or good enough to do any of these things in the church. So I'll just do nothing. And um, so that I really married into it. And that's when it really became evident to me that I was the type of person that was letting fear hold me back with all of my decisions. Yeah, I think that's something so many of us can relate to. And it's good to hear that even pastor's wives deal with this too, but just this fear that hold us back. Can you share any examples from women that you've talked to or maybe research that you did in writing your book of what kinds of things that just the average woman um in what ways is she held back? What is she fearful of? What is something that um, readers could really like identify with themselves and relate to? Yeah, that's a great question. So I teach here at my church in a women's group on a weekly basis. And so um, I do get a lot of that real life conversation with women and it became pretty evident over the years of just teaching, but then as I get to know women in my church as a pastor's wife here, that women are struggling with just this 
inside voice in their head that is telling them that they can't really open up to other people or they're the only ones that are afraid to do this thing or when they're going through struggles they're they're all alone and what if people are going to judge them or think differently of them if they open up and so the instead of being the type of people that are living our life just kind of you know in community with each other we're shrinking back because we're just afraid when there's a problem in our life or afraid to disclose the things that are going on in our life so instead of being able to share your life together and let people and allow them to help you pull you through things in your life we're more bent towards isolation and I'm probably the only one and what if they judge me and I don't measure up and I'm not that good and all of those things are these internal battles that are going on in women's heads all the time and when one person finally opens opens up it's like the room is like oh wow I thought it was the only one I'm so glad somebody else is in the same place that I am but we're all just you know oftentimes just showing up with a smile and we're fine and we're really not always fine but we're afraid to say so so often and it's not just in the church it's in our workplaces and in our family gatherings and coffee with a friend when we want to get beyond a surface conversation, but we just don't let ourselves go there. Yeah, that's something that, I mean, I do that all the time. I know other people, like friends, the conversation just seems to stay really surface level. And I, um, you know, I really want to dig in deeper, but it doesn't seem like it's always socially appropriate um, to really dig in and share all these things. Um, so I was wondering another thing, why do you think it is that women are so scared to be able to open us up or to open up? What do you think is holding us back from having these real conversations? Yeah, I think it's just that internal fear of um, what are people going to think of me or we've spent so much time putting on this persona that we are okay, we look put together, we don't really, our family looks fine and we've spent so long not opening up to someone that it just becomes something that's really hard to do. And there's that trust issue. Maybe you've opened up with someone in the past and you got hurt. It was the wrong person and they really took it to a place and, and it hurt you. They betrayed you maybe and then that stops you and you think, well, I'll never do that again. I mean, we know when it comes with the things of God, the, the saying the never and I can't do that again or not taking a step just because something bad happened to me in the past really is something that can hold us back. And so women, you know, and it's just that fear of judgment. What are they going to think of me? You know, I'm going to be so embarrassed. I really think a lot of times and as I've dug down deep with some women, over the years, it really can root itself in pride. You know, my pride just won't let me go there. So I'm just going to keep it to myself. But it just becomes an unhealthy place to be, you know, over a long period of time. Yeah, that's a really good point to uh, draw it back to pride because that's not something we usually think of. Oh, we're being prideful. But if you really look at the root of things, I think a lot of times it does come back to, you know, what are people going to think about me? And I need them to think well of me. Um, but I wanted to ask you, I know that you have talked and written about publicly that you have quite a, um, I don't know what word to use, but quite a past and that that's something that you have had to overcome and find ways to deal with and work through. Can you share with us just about your story of the kinds of things that you have gone through, the kinds of things in your past that you've had to overcome and be brave enough to admit and share? Yeah, you bet. So I, you know, as I said before, I didn't grow up in church. I was raised by a single mom and my parents were each on their third marriages. So I didn't have a very healthy view of family and marriage in the first place. Um, I came from just a long line of alcoholism in the family and drug abuse. And I witnessed a lot of these things at a young age and even sexual abuse. And so my, that formulated even my early years, you know, in elementary school, by the time I was in fifth grade, I had gone to nine different schools by uh, as a fifth grader. And so I just never had any stability in my life. The amazing thing was is that I had an uncle who um, came and got me and would take me to church when he could. And so I began to get exposed to the church. And, and so I had some in and out times within the church. And so that was amazing. But just the way that I grew up in that um, dysfunction and alcoholism, that really never left my life the whole time and so I took on some of those characteristics even in my own life and really very early on learned how to, to um, live a double life and all these things could be going on in my home all of these terrible things and abuse and and the things that I was seeing but I could show up at school the next day and put a smile on my face and with my friends and pretend that I was just fine I just wanted to fit in 
like everybody else and look like my life was okay and good. So I hid the fact that these were all the things that I was going through in my house because I learned early on if you could put a smile on your face and say you were fine, everybody would just believe you. They didn't have a reason to otherwise. And so that led me down just a series of choices of making some pretty horrible choices even in my own life. Not things that were done to me, but choices that I made myself as really just trying to be that girl that could just fit in. And so when I you know, gave my heart to the Lord, He really transformed a lot of things within me. But there were a lot of years that that didn't happen. You know, I was in and out of church as a high schooler. I had church friends and I had my school friends. I had the school friends that I would make these decisions with and I had my church friends that I would go and pretend to be this girl with. And so it wasn't really until after I got out of college that the Lord really got a hold of my life and transformed it. And that was at the time that I was marrying into the ministry as well. But I brought a whole lot of baggage into uh, a life in the church. And so when I married into the church, it was like, whoa, what do we do with all this stuff of who Lisa was, even though I had been forgiven from God about all of the things I had done, I was so afraid that what were people going to think of me if they find, find out where I came from. So I just continued to hide everything about my life. And I think it's so important and it's so wonderful that you are now willing to share the things that you have been through and the things that you're done that you've done in the past because it really opens up a door for more women to say, you know, it's okay that we have past. Um, it's okay that we've done things, it's okay that things have been done to us. Um, because when you say things, it just gives other people that permission that they need. But let me ask you, what about a woman who is in a situation where everybody around her is putting on a happy face and she's not okay and she needs to get to the point where she can um, share what she's going through. How can she be brave enough to say what's really going on with her when she's the only one and other people around her haven't started this for her? I mean, it's wonderful when someone really can take that brave step and start that cycle within a church, whether it's in your small group or maybe a group of friends that get together, um, because someone really does have to step out and start that trend to let other people know it's okay. The amazing thing is when you really can be brave and open up and go a little bit deeper with somebody, it's contagious. It gives other women the freedom to begin to share. And so it really is realizing within yourself that you need that, that you just can't go on the way you are. You've got to have an opportunity to talk to somebody. And I truly believe that when we ask God for that opportunity, help help me have that courage to be able to open up with some women, that he will present opportunities in our path. You know, you'll be sitting with a friend, you know, maybe you're having coffee and you can feel it. You can feel your heart beating. You know you need to take this conversation in a different direction and a little bit deeper. And you're so afraid. I can feel it almost like that was happening to me right now because it's happened to me on so many moments. But when you can just step beyond it because you know that you need to, getting on the other side of it really does cause other people to um, realize that they can do the same. And when it happens, when someone takes a brave step and courage is just unleashed in a group or in your church or when you begin to talk about it, it, it really is amazing to watch other women be able to open up their lives and heal from some of the brokenness that they're harboring within their life. So it's like, you could be that one. What if it's you that starts that trend in your group of friends that decides to say, hey, I I'm going to step out. I know I need it. And what if on the other side of all of this, it's just going to help other women's lives change because somebody has finally made that step to be a little bit vulnerable, even when it is uncomfortable. Yeah, I love that. And I love the perspective too of even if you think you're fine yourself and you're like, I can handle it. You know, I'll just keep it in. I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. Um, what about the other people in your life though that maybe aren't doing fine and they need somebody to go first in order to give them permission? So if you can't do it for yourself, you know, can you do it for other women who need you to go first so that they can do it as well. Which brings me to my next question is, okay, so we have a woman who says, yes, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be vulnerable. I'm going to start sharing my story. How does she start? What are her first steps? Like, what does that look like super practically speaking? Yeah. So a lot of times it's just really being able to open up to what it is in your life right now that's causing this you know, turmoil, this inner turmoil. Maybe you've been in church and there's been a series of messages that have really kind of 
opened up some sur- brought back things to the surface that maybe you've been harboring from your past that you have never healed from. Well, it can be very difficult in a group just to go deep about the horrible decisions that you have made or maybe, you know, some abuses or whatever happened in your life. But to open up the conversation is simply to say, "Listen, I am not myself and I haven't been feeling myself for a while. There's been some things in my life and I I just need some help getting through tackling some of these feelings that I'm dealing with. I mean, just some leading conversations that just begin to say that allow other people to kind of wake up and pay attention and then begin to ask some questions or, you know, can I pray with you about something? What is it? And it will lead to getting you to the deep places that you need to talk about. But women can't often just spill it out there. But what if we were just saying, listen, my husband and I are just not getting along. I don't know what it is, but we're just arguing about all of these things. Maybe you know the deeper thing that's there, but just by saying something like that, instead of being like, oh yeah, my husband's great. You know, we're doing awesome. When really you're not. But what if somebody else that you're with has some of the best advice or at the very least is just coming side by side with you to pray for you and your family. Um, You know, so many times in the church, especially, we've had a family that will come to us and say they've just filed for divorce. And the crazy thing is, is this will be a family that we know. And we never even knew their marriage was in trouble because there was never, can we, can we talk with you? Can we get together? Would you pray for us? It was always showing up and we're fine and there's a smile. And so then you think, okay, if that woman maybe in her circle of friends just had been willing to say listen i'm just not getting along with my husband right now and i can't quite figure out what it is just to open up a conversation about it and that will almost always lead to helping you get someplace deeper but the the yeah we're great we did this on friday night we had dinner at this place it was wonderful you know those are all great conversations to have but life is about some deeper things and you have to surround yourself with some people that you ultimately think, I think I can go there with this person. You know, I'm going to have to trust them a little bit more to go a little bit deeper. Yeah, that's one of my biggest, not my biggest fears. So in this area, one of my biggest fears is just knowing that I could have a really close friend who is headed towards a divorce or who has something huge that they're struggling with and, you know, isn't able to say anything and for them to get to that point where things are falling apart and, you know, why didn't I know this earlier? And I've had friends like this who have, who shared with me after the fact, oh, I went through this really tough time. I'm like, why didn't I know? I would have been there. I would have done something. Um, So I think part of it is just like pushing them just on a day-to-day basis, even when you don't think there's a lot going on, pushing them past the point of saying, oh, I'm fine. Everything's good um, in the day-to-day, just so that they don't get to that point in the future and being a good friend that way. Um, This is kind of off topic, but kind of on topic. Have you seen the TV show that's on right now, A Million Little Things? Yes, I have. Not, not, um, I see it off and on, so I don't get to see it every week, but I'm sort of following the story. So yes, I have seen um, a few episodes of it. I am not one to watch a lot of TV, but I happened to catch the first episode of that one. And that just really relates to what we're talking about now. And I'm just really enjoying it. Um, it, For anybody watching this who hasn't caught this TV show, which is totally fine, it's TV. Um, But basically the story starts out with like four best friends and then one of them goes and kills himself in the very first episode. And throughout the whole rest of the season, it's just them figuring out how did we not know and figuring out everybody else in their circle of friends, like all of these secrets that everybody has been keeping from each other, um, even from their significant other, from their spouses, and like just getting in and saying, hey, you need to tell me, we need to do this together. Um, And that has just been a really good reminder. I know it's not like a super biblical thing, it's TV, um, but that's been a really good reminder of me, of to me for, you never know what the people around you are going through. So you really have to like dig in and, you know, get them to share things that they might not otherwise, not to be nosy, but just to be a good friend who's going to be there for them. Yeah, it's so true. I remember when that TV show came out and I thought, that's it. That show's going to hit, hit a a nerve and a, a spot in people because of the exact way we're around people all the time and we don't really know what's going on in their life. I know I had this this happen recently and this is a way that a conversation can start and I didn't even intend for it to, but it's just about living your life a little bit more transparently. I was meeting a friend and we were getting together for coffee and we were talking and she commented about my outfit that I was wearing. I love clothes, I love to shop, you know, it's just something that I enjoy doing. And she mentioned to me, she says, 
you know, you just always look so put together. And I don't know why I said this because it wouldn't be something I would normally say. I said, yeah, you know, I really love clothes and I love to get dressed. I said, I just wish I didn't worry every day about how I looked in my clothes. Like, if, I don't know why I worry about everything I put in my body and how my body is changing. And I just made some comments like that because, you know, as you age, you're always worried about it. Well, she, that small thing that seemed ins insignificant for me to say actually triggered something in her to say, yeah, you know, I've been struggling with. And it, it led to her opening up about an eating disorder that she had had and never told anybody about. And it was such a, such an easy, just like a tiny bit nugget of truth on my part to say, yeah, I, I, I don't know why I worry about what I look like all the time that opened up her to think, oh my goodness, I can open up about this. And it really is a simple as living life that way. Just simple transparencies that we can open up about. Sometimes we'll give other people a freedom to open up about some big stuff. Yeah, because we never know, like just the littlest things that we, not even huge struggles, but just the littlest things that we struggle with that other people are thinking that we don't struggle with and nobody else struggles with, especially with the Instagram culture that we have going on right now where everybody sees everyone's highlight reel of, oh, they just look amazing all the time and all these things. And people have told me, oh, you know, you seem like you have everything all together. And I'm like, no, like this is just social media. This is what you do. You're seeing people's highlight reel. That's not their real life. You're only seeing the good parts and you don't don't see all the bad parts and you don't see all the behind the scenes things that make up a real life we have to be intentional with our friendships to get some of that behind the scenes things that, you know maybe aren't appropriate for the entire world but in your friendships yeah you should be sharing these things yeah so so true so let me ask you, because um, this kind of brings into my next question. You mentioned earlier about how it can be difficult to share things when in the past you've been hurt. So obviously we don't want to just go and share all of our insecurities and vulnerabilities with the entire world. How do we know who is safe to talk to and who we can open up with? And how do we know when it's really not a good choice of a person to open up to? You know, you can't really just open up to strangers all the time. I and mean, it's not, no one wants to stand in line at Chick-fil-A and have the person around them start just opening up about these things in their life. You're like, I just need my waffle fries, you know? But, uh, but you have to put yourself in a position to be around people and get to know people. So in other words, you cannot stay isolated in your home behind an Instagram screen or Facebook and think, oh yeah, I'm interacting with all these people because that's not real community. You've got to get involved in a small group in your church or have regular times where you're with a group of people that you can go to lunch or you've got to instigate a little bit of community in your life because it's those moments that will begin to put you around other people to give you the opportunity to be able to talk so that when you do need to talk, you're not looking around thinking there's no one in my life. I mean, I can attribute a lot of the decisions that I made as a younger girl, as a teenager, and even in college as I just didn't make enough relationship in my life. I just stayed so isolated with my problems that when I was facing something awful, I didn't know who to talk to about it. So it, if you can live your life in some community and realize that you need some friends, you don't have to have a giant group of friends, but reach out, begin to be the person that'll reach out to other people and just befriend someone, you know, and you will find that there are people in your life that you can begin to open up to. And you'll just, you know, you naturally will attract and connect with people a lot of times like yourself. So I would say people have got to get out there into small groups and into places and show up in places where you can be around some other people and start to um, get more relationship in your life. Don't, and you know, I, I talk about that isolation problem all the time in my church. I'm always pushing women. I can see the ones that are like, oh yeah, I'm thinking about coming to small group this week or to Bible study, but I can tell on their face, they're so unsure and they're like, yeah, I don't know. And they so easily talk themselves out of putting themselves in a position where they're going to be around people for whatever reason, nervous, scared, uh, all, all those things. But we have to just get beyond ourselves and realize sometimes it's not even all about us. But what if by you showing up, you're the very, you say something in that small group or with a group of friends that really touches the heart of somebody else? I think we're always affecting the lives of other people. We need to remember oftentimes it's not just about us. 
in this world of serving God, he always made it about other people, not just us and all the people that are around us. And so as much as you need other people in your life, they, they need you to show up for them. And if you are never in a place of community, how are you ever showing up for people? You know, again, I, Facebook, social media, I'm on all of those things, but they don't truly count as true community. They are like the added things on top, but we've got to do more face-to-face -face connecting in our life. We have just got to. Yeah, you're so right about that. So let me ask you another question then. Um, up until this point, we've talked a lot about just um, small insecurities that we're having or you know, being there for others. But what would you say to a woman who just has this huge like thing she is struggling with? Maybe it's something from her past, something that she did that she just doesn't know how she's ever going to get over, something that was done to her, um, just something that she feels like is now defining her and she just can't even you know, open up and be who she is around anybody because she is so consumed with whatever it is. Do you have advice for a woman who's in a situation like that? Yeah, I will. And I'll use an example from my own life because um, it's something that I put in the book, but up until now I wasn't really speaking about publicly. And that was the fact that I had chosen to, when I was in college, to have an abortion and not just one, but two. And it was a very traumatizing time in my life. And of course, my husband knew this before we got married and knew exactly what he was getting in a wife when he was marrying me. But I became very content to tuck that back away, knowing that God had forgiven me, but tuck it back away and just leave it there, which caused me to not really completely heal from it or over the years be in front of women who were struggling with these kinds of things. So a lot of times we can push those deep hurts and pains back because we're, again, it was a place of pride. And what is this, what is the church going to think of me? And what are these women that I'm now set up as a, a leader in their life? If they only knew that this is who I was, you know, goodness, what is going to happen? And so many women are struggling with that very thing. Maybe not the same choice that I made, but there are those things in the past, but anything that's causing our emotions and causing us to focus on things that we did versus focusing on where we are now and where we're going, because we know that with, with God, he forgave us for these things and he wants us to move forward in freedom, but we ourselves are keeping ourselves trapped because freedom with Christ is beautiful and it's wonderful, but we also are people who are we like to touch and feel and talk and we need to sometimes talk through and heal with people we need to let them know where we've been or what we've done for the simple fact that we need people to pray for us and help us through i don't know how we're supposed to get through some of those big things in our life that have hurt us so much without other people surrounding us saying i'm going to help you get through this i know it feels impossible you're not going to get there you've just gotten divorced or these tragic things just happened in your family it's people and the strength that you can feel from them pushing you forward spiritual friends praying for you that you have to heal from those things and so when things are recurring in your life like it was that recurring the year before i was writing the book you know, again, with abortion, and it's so wildly in our news right now, and everybody has a different perspective of it. And, you know, I certainly have my own perspective of it, but from a place of someone who chose to do those things. But the year before I was writing the book, I didn't intend to put that particular story in the book. I had never discussed it publicly. There were just a handful of people who knew in my life. Not even my own kids knew. And I have four college-age grown kids. And so you can imagine when I was telling them that portion of their mom's life, besides all of the other things that I had done. But in that year before, I sat in front of so many women who were like, hey, I need to talk to you. Could we get together? And that was their story. They had had an abortion and they were having trouble getting through it. And this, it just kept coming up. And I'm like, Lord, what are you doing? You, this must be your time and season that you are ready for just somebody else to step up and start speaking about healing from things in your past. And so I added that portion of the story in and it's opened up some rich conversation in my life. But I think God does that. He, if we're willing to admit it, that nudge is always there from the Holy Spirit when we need to open up about something Again, like I said, you can feel it. So he's constantly nudging us saying, listen, just trust me. Get it out. Talk with someone. I've given you opportunities and people in your path. And we just, we've just we got to be willing to just take that opportunity to open up. If we truly want to experience 
you know, all that God has for us. We've got to get rid of the baggage. We've got to live in that community and know that we can heal. And just because we made decisions in our past doesn't mean it is going to inhibit us from doing big things in our future. You know, he, God doesn't work that way in our life. He uses it for us instead of uses it against us, you know, uses it for us, for his good. Well, before we run out of time today, I want to absolutely make sure that you have some opportunity to tell us about your book that just launched recently. Um, it's called Courageously Uncomfortable When the Real Woman You Want to Be is on the Other Side of Fear. Can you tell us a little bit about who this book is for, um, what they'll find in it, and why they absolutely should go check it out today? Courageously Uncomfortable is for that woman who is making her decisions based on fear. Really, it's for that woman who knows that there's a little bit more in her life and she wants to experience some more in her life. So, but you just can't get there because your comfort zone just feels so much more actually just comfortable. You're you're good with it, but you know that you could be experiencing so much more in God if you just had the courage to take a step. So, it is realizing that you can love God, but you can still waste your life for God because you have this need to be comfortable. So if you're ready to take some brave steps, take a risk, maybe take some action and do some things in your life that literally have been stopped by some fears, then this book is for you to help you realize, number one, you're not alone and that you can do it. And as a matter of fact, if God put it on your heart, you need to do it. You need to move forward knowing that you might not be comfortable, but you can do it anyways. Well, thank you so much, Lisa, for taking the time to talk to us today. This has just been such a great conversation. Well, I appreciate ha uh, you having me on here today, even through all the technical things. You have been so patient and so wonderful to talk to. All right, so hopefully this podcast episode really encouraged and challenged you to get out there, get vulnerable, and to create more of an authentic community around yourself where you can be yourself and give others permission to be their truth selves as well. You guys, this is just so important for us to live together in community as we try to live out this Christian life that we are trying to live. You cannot do this alone and neither can your friends and family and the people all around you. So this is something I really hope that you will continue to look for opportunities to live out in the weeks to come. If you want even more on this topic, be sure to check out Lisa's book, Courageously Uncomfortable, When the Real Woman You Want to Be is on the Other Side of Fear. And I also have a few other articles I think will be really helpful for you, um, specifically how to make friends. Um, and I'll link those in the show notes as well. So go ahead and check those out as well. And as always, if you are not subscribed to the Equipping Godly Women podcast, what are you waiting for? I come back every week, every other week or so to bring you encouragement and to challenge you and to inspire you with the issues that we as Christian women deal with all the time. So go ahead and subscribe if you have not already, and I will see you back here real soon. All right, bye.